communion of the Holy Spirit, the missing link. I want to talk about the most important topic you will ever hear as a Christian because everything else stems or springs forth from our fellowship, intimacy with God after our relationship with the Father through the blood and broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. After we accepted the Lord as our Lord and personal Savior, then the next thing, the next best thing, the most important thing, exercise or phenomenon is to be acquainted with the Holy Spirit. If you don't acquaint yourself with the Holy Spirit, you miss the whole essence of the Trinity. This is the most important person on planet Earth as we speak. The Father is in heaven. The Son is in heaven. There was dispensation of God the Father. Dispensation of God the Son. He came here in a bodily form and spent three and a half years training his disciples. Died. Shed his blood. His body was broken for our salvation, our redemption, our restoration. Went back to heaven and then sent the Holy Spirit who is the most important person. In fact, you can't even come to God unless the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, draws you to Him. If you sin against the Father, you'll be forgiven. If you sin against the Son, you'll be forgiven. But if you sin against the Blessed, Sweet Holy Spirit, the Bible says it's the sin of blasphemy, you will not be forgiven. Amazing. So this is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit this is his time. This is his era. This is his epoch. This is the last of the last days. We need intimacy, communion, fellowship with the Holy Spirit like never before. Relationship and communion is not the same. I will consider four words that we might examine and periscope and dissect or break down for us to understand it all of them one by one there are four of them relationship fellowship or companionship partnership and friendship on this four level we can relate to god relationship and fellowship are not the same thing when you accepted jesus as lord and personal savior you become a child of god according to John 1, 12. And relationship will never be broken. But you can break fellowship. Or fellowship can break down. Sometimes we call it fellowship or communication. That's the same word or where we get the word communion or common union or companionship. All of them came from the same root word. Now, we can relate to God on these levels. You understand that even Abraham was called a friend of God. And Apostle John was called Jesus' best friend. That's relationship on a friendship level. But you can also have partnership. A lot of people say, oh, God, use me. God, use me. That's the lower end. God can use you in other words, works through you. But do you know you can partner with God to understand that you are co-laborer or co-worker with God? It's a higher privilege. It's a higher level of relationship as well. Then I've talked about fellowship. So fellowship and relationship, it's not the same. Because I hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm working on my relationship with God. No, you cannot work on your relationship after you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You can only work on your, on your companionship or your communion. Let's look at the Bible, the King James Version, 2 Corinthians 13, 4. 
we quote this always, especially when we say the grace. We read it this way. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and forevermore. Amen. Remember, we quote this always. But we recite it as part of religion. We recite it as routine, as ritual. We recite it casually. It has become an integral part of our motion and mechanics. It's nothing but, but a kind of ritual or religion. But I want you to get the revelation. Otherwise, you won't have revolution. And without that, there is no elevation because everything comes out of intimacy. Everything comes out of intimate knowledge. That word is gnosko in Greek, giving rise to a higher degree of intimacy or a higher degree of partnership or communion or companionship, which we call epigonosco, which is experiential knowledge, practical knowledge. This is the same way when the Bible says Abraham knew his wife. is a product of intimacy. And with intimacy, you can bear fruit. You can bear children. You can bear offspring, which is evidence of your relationship. Or more importantly, your communion with the Holy Spirit. Now, if you notice, most relationship experts will tell you that before you marry somebody, in union, which we call marriage or matrimony, there must be kind of knowledge of the person, which we call acknowledgement of that relationship or what we call acquaintanceship. Then from that acquaintanceship, friendship can develop. When there is promise to marry one another in future, then there's courtship. And after courtship is the wedding, the wedlock what we call communion or common union, as the case may be, where the wedding is solemnized publicly after private relationship in acquaintanceship, friendship, courtship. So now, I want us to examine where we read on the Bible, what we read in the Bible that I just catered for us. We want to examine some key words and key phrases there. The first is said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So grace is the key word there. The love of God. So love is the key word there when it comes to God. Grace is key word when it comes to Jesus. But did you know when it comes to the Holy Spirit, you see communion? Because it said, and the communion of the Holy Ghost. Communion is the same thing we can't say this enough as fellowship. Some translation call it the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. But let's examine something here very quickly. Child of God, you discover that everything comes out of our communion or common union. If you want to be used of God, if you want to be productive, if you want your Christian life to count, if you want to be somebody who do exploit for God, a vessel for display, the person that God uses, the person that partners with God in science, wonders, and miracle, the person that will be a preferred vessel, yielded vessel to God must be somebody that understand, participates, engages in deep, consecrated intimacy with God that is unbroken, perpetual, continuous, lively, alive, fresh, and vibrant. Without that, everything falls apart. Every relationship with God and everything we get from God is dependent on intimacy. If you want to hear from God, 
if you want to know God more, if you want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, if you want God to use you, if you want to work for God, if you want to do exploits to expand the kingdom of God, to work in miracle, to work in signs and wonders, to work in healing and in deliverance, to influence civilization, influence people, influence their life for the better, make impact in your world, in this world, and leave your footprints at the sands of history. Knowing God through intimacy is the key. And you cannot know God without the Holy Spirit. Now, when you have communion, you discover that love is automatic. Grace is generated. But today, we celebrate grace. We talk about the love of God. But nobody talks about the most important link that hook you up to everything else, including grace, love, works, or ministry, or call it doing the works of God, or doing exploits for God, or doing great things, and influencing humanity and civilization. Like God starts locally, but acts globally. So, if you want everything from God and anything from God, it all comes from intimacy. I want to read something for us before I continue and then talk about how to strengthen our relationship with God. This is the fact that Jesus, when he was going, said he would come back to us. Jesus also said something amazing that he will be in us, that if he doesn't go, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth will not come. And how did Jesus come back to us? Through the person of the Holy Spirit. And this will solve every puzzle in Christianity because people spend time with social media, the new idol. This is why God said it's a jealous God. Anytime anybody talks, especially when people worship any other thing, any other idol, which comes in different ways, guises, forms, and fashion, God say, I'm a jealous God. And truly, there's no true love without jealousy. And today, the idol is social media. People can spend time in social media and don't spend time with God. Call it spending time with God. Call it quiet time. Call it alone with God. Some people call it covenant time. If you don't spend time with God, you won't know God. You won't hear God. You won't walk like God. You won't think like God. You won't do exploits for God. You won't walk in power. You won't walk in miracle, signs, wonders. Because these things signify the presence of God. And without the presence of God, that means there is no personality of God or the personality of the Holy Spirit. And without the personality of the Holy Ghost, you won't see the glory. So intimacy is very, very important. Sometimes people call it soaking with God. God soaks us or we soak in order to be saturated with God in spirit so that we can work for him to influence others, to touch other lives, to do the works of Jesus. So the scripture said the Holy Ghost will be in us. He'll be with us. He'll be upon us. So if they are all the same, God wouldn't have distinguished them. Therefore, God does things in levels, in dimensions, in degree, and in measure, quantity, or amount. You can be deep, deeper, and deepest with God, depending on your level and degree of intimacy. You see, you can be as close to God as you want to be. There's no monopoly in relationship with God. When you spend time with somebody, you know them the better. You know them intimately. You can even begin to discern their mindset and begin to think like them and begin to see like them. 
I begin to reason like them. I begin to act like them. I begin to even predict them unconsciously, automatically. And this is the key to relating or have intimate relationship and fellowship, what I call common union. That word is an acronym of two words. Communion, which is common union. You have things in common. You do things together. You spend time together. When you spend time, you spend life because time is the stuff of life. In fact, time is the greatest commodity that is replaceable in the whole universe. So, child of God, there's something Jesus said here. It's going to be a long read, and I'm going to read it for us in King James Version. I'm reading from John chapter 14, from verse 11. Let me back up to 10, from verse 10. Believers thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whosoever ye shall ask, rather, sorry, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. How? Through, by the Holy Spirit. I want you to see something here. We always quote John 12 verse 14 sorry john verse 14 verse 12 where jesus said greater works shall we do now he talks about works he talks about commandments and he talks about we loving him and him being close to the father in oneness in union in communion well that's exactly the way god wants us to relate with the holy ghost the holy ghost is in you the holy ghost is upon you the Holy Ghost is with you. The Holy Ghost with you is the person that God wants to fellowship with you in intimacy, in deep oneness, in knowledge. This knowledge is the knowledge that says Abraham knew his wife and he conceived a seed. This knowledge is not casual knowledge or knowledge you obtain by research, knowledge you obtain by mere acquaintance or casual interaction. No, this knowledge in Greek is called epigonosco, which is superior, deep, intimate, experiential knowledge. This is what God wants us to do. The most important time or the most important thing we should do is to relate with the Holy Ghost through intimacy. When you relate with the Holy Ghost, you solve the problem of knowing God. You solve the problem of walking in the grace of Jesus Christ. The highest form of grace. The dimension of grace that nobody has ever known. Most of our problem is that we don't spend time with God. We are not acquainted with the Holy Spirit through intimacy. Every good thing, every blessing, every breakthrough, deliverance, turnaround, confidence, faith comes through intimacy. 
with the Holy Spirit. And nobody can come to God unless his Spirit, the Holy Spirit, draws him. And nobody can know God without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power of the Trinity. He's the, the energizer or the power force or the life force of the Godhead. God does not move except by His Spirit. You cannot follow God. You cannot flow with God. You cannot hear His voice. You cannot be sensitive to God or things of God or walk supernatural miracle, signs and wonder without spending time, without intimacy with the Holy Spirit. If you spend time chatting with friends, spend time watching social media, going to Facebook, going to YouTube, or any of the social media platform that is the new God, you are spending your life, you are spending your time, you are spending your energy, you are watching things, you are hearing things, you are reading things. Why can't we spend it with our intimacy with God? With knowing God more, with soaking in God, with worshiping God, with ministering to the Lord, so that we are so close and so intimate and perfectly intertwined and intricately related to God that we begin to see the way God sees, hears the way God hears, knows the way God knows, walks the way God walks, acts the way God acts, do exploits, become intellectually creative and productive mind that practicalize to actualize everything we see because God cannot fail. God cannot falter. God is not a God of backwardness. He's not a God of difficulty. Even attacks from the enemy ceases. You will not hear other voices. You begin to hear the voice of God clearly, unmistakably, distinctly. No hit and miss, no try and error. No beating about the bush, no guesswork. You begin to know God like never before. You begin to develop anointing or grace that is unprecedented. You begin to be humble because God also is humble by nature. You begin to walk in love. All the characteristics of God, the character of God, not just the power, the charisma, you begin to imbibe it. And you cannot fail because God never fails. So this is the power of intimacy. Child of God, spend time with God. Relate with God. Acquaint yourself with God. Communicate with God. Know God more. You got to be in the know to be in the flow. When you know God, all other things are details. We begin to know his mind or mindset or the way God acts, the way God sees, the way God hears, the way God does things. Then the grace of Jesus comes and permeates through you and walks through you and relates to the world through you. Your eye will become the eye of Jesus to the world. Your ear will become the ear of Jesus. Your hand will become Jesus' hand extended. Your legs will become the, the legs of Jesus because the Spirit of God will not take you where the grace of God will not sustain you. This is the key, child of God. Spend time with God, knowing God, seeking God. See, King Uzziah, the Bible says that as long as he saw the Lord, he made him to prosper. The Bible said in Hebrew that they that must come to God must believe that he is and it's a reward of them that diligently seek him. You have to yearn for God. You have to be God's chaser. You have to crave for God. And they start with intimacy. That's where everything comes out of. And everything works through relationship. Without contact, there's no contract. Without bond, you cannot be a bond slave of Jesus Christ. Everything Apostle Paul did was because he understood intimacy. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. He said he doesn't want to preach anything but Christ. He was so intimate with the Lord Jesus Christ because he understood the Holy Spirit. Because when you understand the Holy Spirit, when you are intimate with the Holy Spirit, you know the Son more. And when you know the Son, the Father is appreciated. The Father is honored. He's the source. You know, God is like the Son. If you consider Trinity in our relationship, He, he will emanate or radiate His light. 
That light is Jesus Christ, the light of the world. But the heat that is created is the Holy Spirit. I'm just drawing an analogy. So the Trinity is in dimensions. It's one God, one source. That's why God is called the Father or the origin or the source. He's the God of the spirit of all flesh, the Father of spirits. So he's our source. But you cannot know him directly until you experience the heat. From the heat, the light comes. When the light comes, you relate to God, which is the life or the sun, the source of everything. So when you relate with the Holy Spirit, when you marinate yourself in the Holy Spirit, by knowing God through the word, by spending time with God, I'm not just talking about prayer because a lot of people only pray to God because they have problems. They pray because of issues. They pray because of challenges. They don't pray for intimacy to know God. Jesus Christ spent all night in prayer. He does or withdraw to a lonely place to spend time with God to pray. His prayer is not because of need. His prayer is mainly based on maintaining relationships, spending time with the Father. Well, most of our prayer today is prayer points based on fighting the devil or based on need. That's not the kind of prayer of intimacy I'm looking for. I'm talking about prayer of dedication, prayer of consecration, prayer that you want to relate to God and know him more and talk to him in communication. That's where the Holy Ghost comes in. The Holy Ghost wants us to talk to the Father. And that is also where we do meditation and soaking because in prayer, you talk to God. In meditation, God will speak to you. In other words, prayer is not complete until God speaks to you because communication is a two-way traffic. It's not one lane. When you talk to God, you have to listen. You have to pause and ponder. You have to meditate and muse. You have to think about God and his words. And then he will drop messages. He will tell you things. The kingdom is voice activated. The kingdom is powered by words. The kingdom is powered by vibration of sound. The sound energy will go back to light energy. The light energy will go back to the source, which is the sun. So this is just an analogy. But the Father loves us to relate to the Spirit. He loves His Spirit and loves His Son. They are all from Him. So child of God, spend time with God instead of with people, monkey chara, ungodly chara, talking about other things. Talk about what will help you move your destiny forward because you related with God in intimacy. Thank you. God bless you. I'll continue this series the next time. It's getting long. Dr. Ozo, bye-bye.